Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. How crucial is the length you supply tension to a muscle? Does hypertrophy notably differ between training a muscle in a more shortened or stretched position? If so, does this apply to all muscles? Let's dissect what the scientific literature suggests. Starting with the quadriceps, does this muscle grow more with exercises achieving a stretch? A 2014 UK study compared leg extension training with a partial range of motion at a shortened muscle length to one at a stretched muscle length, and vastus lateralis growth across three regions was greater when training at a stretched muscle length. The differences were particularly notable at the 50% and especially 75% regions. Another 2014 study by the same researchers compared leg extensions with a partial at short lengths to a full range of motion that would have achieved a stretch. Vastus lateralis gains were overall better with a full range of motion, with the differences being very large at the 75% region. A 2013 Denmark study compared squatting at shortened muscle lengths to training a larger range of motion that stretched the quads, and thigh growth across all measured regions was more pronounced with a larger range of motion. Like the two previous studies, the differences again were more striking in the lower regions of the muscle. A 2019 Japanese paper, interestingly, compared a partial range of motion to a full range of motion squat, and quadriceps gains were similar between both. The partial range of motion was done to 90 degrees of knee flexion, and this still achieves a stretch of the quads. So maybe the stretch attained with 90 degrees of knee flexion is sufficient for quad growth. Further stretch isn't beneficial or any worse. But this is purely speculation from a single paper. More research would be needed to verify this idea. In any event, it's clear to see stretch, either through a large range of motion or a partial range of motion in the stretched positions provokes prominently greater hypertrophy, particularly at the lower quadriceps regions. A fascinating question is how does a large range of motion compare to a partial range of motion at stretched positions for quadriceps development? A 2021 Brazil study examined this. Matter of fact, they compared virtually all kinds of range of motions, a full range of motion, a partial one at stretched positions, a partial one at shortened positions, and a combination of partial at stretched and shortened positions. Rectus femoris and vastus lateralis growth was overall superior with a partial range of motion at stretched positions versus all other conditions. The differences were particularly discernible at the lower regions of the muscle. Thus, perhaps partials at stretched positions could be better for quad development versus a full range of motion. Yet, it's worth remembering this is merely one study and only the leg extension was utilized. Hopefully future research further compares stretched partials and a full range of motion. You could experiment with stretched partials if you wish. Anyhow, it's clear you'd want to select exercises that stretch the quads and ensure you use some kind of range of motion that attains that stretch. I've batched the glutes and adductors together as there's only one paper technically exploring how stretch influences their hypertrophy. This paper is the aforementioned 2019 one from Japan, which compared a partial to a full range of motion squat. The full squats would have stretched the glute max and adductors more, and both these muscles grew strikingly more with this versus the partial range of motion. There actually is another 2020 Brazilian study technically examining stretch on the glutes, they compared full range of motion squats to hip thrusts. Full range of motion squats would supply tension to the glutes while stretched, while hip thrusts supply tension while shortened. It was supposedly found glute max hypertrophy was markedly more with the squats. Yet a major problem is this specific group of researchers has had the validity of their data questioned. A lot of their work seems to be improbable, so I don't believe we can sincerely trust the authenticity of these results. It would be neat to have future data comparing squats to hip thrusts for glute development. At any rate, that Japanese paper is still fair evidence with squatting variations at least. Deeper ranges of motion that stretch the glutes and adductors more notably induces greater hypertrophy. Evaluating the hamstrings, except for the biceps femoris short head, which is a one joint muscle that only crosses the knee joint. All the other heads of the hamstrings are two-jointed since they cross both the knee and hip joints. Due to this structural point, seated curls are going to stretch all two-jointed hamstring muscles more than lying leg curls, even if the range of motion is the same between them. A 2021 Japanese paper established that when comparing these two movements, hypertrophy of all the two-joint hamstring muscles was superior with seated leg curls. 
while biceps for more a short head hypertrophy were similar between both seated and lying curls. The researchers also nicely assessed regional growth of the biceps femoris long head and semitendinosus, and growth at the upper and lower regions of these muscles was also superior with the seated leg curls. There's no other direct research on the hamstrings, but I think given this study indicates the hamstrings may benefit from stretch, performing deadlift variations with minimal knee flexion, which permits greater hamstring stretch, may better develop the hamstrings. For example, I speculate stiff-legged deadlifts may produce greater hamstrings hypertrophy compared to conventional deadlifts, given the former commonly involve lower knee flexion and thus greater hamstring stretch. Evaluating the biceps A 2012 Brazil study compared partial to full range of motion preacher curls and found biceps thickness gains tended to favor the full range of motion, but the differences between groups was not statistically significant suggesting the difference could be due to random chance. Yet, I think the difference could be due to a real effect, as if the biceps didn't respond more favorably to stretch, we'd expect a partial range of motion at short lengths on the preacher curl to be similar to a partial at stretched positions. But a 2021 Japanese paper made this comparison and observed overall greater biceps regional gains with stretched positions. The difference was particularly striking at the 70% region. Now, there is another 2021 Brazil paper some used to suggest the biceps do not respond more to stretch. These researchers compared barbell preacher curls to cable preacher curls with the same range of motion and observed similar biceps thickness gains. Barbell preacher curls would stress the biceps at a more stretched position versus cable curls. So one may suggest if the biceps responded to stretch more, the barbell preacher curl should have elicited more gains. Yet, I think it's worth noting cable preacher curls still place some tension on the biceps at a stretched position, and perhaps even more importantly, biceps thickness was only measured at the halfway region of the muscle. Given we've gone through data indicating stretch can be very potent for growing the lower regions of a muscle, including the study just overviewed before this, perhaps gains in such regions would have favored barbell over cable preacher curls. A 2019 Japanese paper may suggest the triceps do not grow more with more stretch. They compared skull crushers performance with a partial range of motion to a full range of motion, and triceps growth at one region favored the partial range of motion. Yet, the partial U still fairly stretched the triceps, so this study does not precisely suggest the triceps don't benefit from stretch. It's just further range of motion on the skull crusher didn't confer added benefit. It's currently unknown mechanistically why this partial was superior to the full range of motion in this paper. Nevertheless, we have other research suggesting the triceps, particularly the long head, may grow more from stretch. The medial and lateral heads only cross the elbow joint, but the long head crosses the shoulder joint plus the elbow joint and is resultantly stretched when placed overhead. If the long head grew more with stretch, overhead triceps extension should develop this muscle more than pushdowns. A 2018 Greek study found this. Long head thickness gains at two regions tended to favor overhead extensions versus pushdowns. Now, the difference in this study was not statistically significant, but I think this study was underpowered. It only had nine subjects. I confidently speculate this as another 2022 Japan paper did observe significantly greater long head growth after training with overhead extensions versus pushdowns. Fascinatingly, this Japanese paper also found that combined lateral and medial head growth was also superior with the overhead extensions versus pushdowns. Now, I've seen some people on the internet simply disregard this paper as there's currently no explanation for the greater medial and lateral head growth with overhead extensions, since these muscles are not stretched anymore in the overhead position. But I think we can all agree just because we can't explain something, it does not mean it did not happen. There could be other mechanisms in play we're simply not currently aware of. It's also worth noting this particular Japanese study was very well designed. It was a within-subject design, meaning subjects trained one arm with overhead extensions and their other arm with pushdowns, thereby removing confounders such as nutrition, genetics, and outside lifestyle. Crystallizing things thus far. We have scientific support the quads, glutes, adductors, hamstrings, biceps, and triceps may indeed all experience more pronounced gains across numerous regions with stretch. Unfortunately, 
No research has explored the effectiveness of stretch-based exercises on the back, shoulder, calves, abs, or chest muscles. Hopefully future research will change this. With the chest though, some very indirect data might suggest it benefits from stretch. A 2022 Spain study involved training the Smith machine bench press with either a full range of motion, two-third top range of motion, or one-third top range of motion. Strength increases on all three bench press ranges of motion were superior after training the full range of motion. These findings partly oppose the principle of specificity, which states you get the best adaptations on what you train. So we'd expect training the two-third top range of motion to produce the best strength with this range of motion and training with a one-third top range of motion to produce the best strength with this range of motion. But neither of these two events happened. Full range of motion training produced superior strength on both these. Could muscle growth explain these results? One reason for the principle of specificity is simply that what you train frequently allows you to develop better skill and coordination on that movement, thereby leading to more strength. Yet a Smith machine was used in this study, and this lowers if not removes any skill component to the movement. Thus, the role of muscle growth, by way of increasing the number of force generating units, may play more of a factor in promoting strength with Smith Machine exercises. So perhaps the full range of motion group saw the most muscle growth, potentially due to the greater chest stretch, thus explaining the greatest strength gains on all bench press ranges of motions. Numerous muscles grow notably more across their regions with stretch. So it's worthwhile selecting exercises and range of motions that attain stretch in your training. One could experiment with a partial range of motion in stretched positions if they like. It's clear to see this can build significant muscle and that there's a crystal clear difference between a partial in shortened positions and one in stretched positions. I'm currently not comfortable in concluding a partial range of motion in stretched positions is superior to a full range of motion, as only one study has explored and found this. It would be awesome to see more research examining this with other movements. If any new data comes out, we of course will be covering this at the House of Hypertrophy. If you've made it here, I have a free ebook you might like, The Ultimate Guide to Bench Pressing for Strength and Hypertrophy with more than 100 scientific references. From technique to training variables to comparisons and other fascinating science, we cover it all. Grab it through the link in the description or comments.